who, thank you very much indeed, guys. Um, that takes us to Night's Drain. Keith. Okay, somebody move. Yep, Pauline moves. Phil, Tim seconds. Any debate? <laughs> Lots of debate. Um, Keith, did you want to say anything? Bless you. Keith, Dave, Tom, any of you want to say anything? Yes, uh, just by way of introduction, uh, so we have the Night Strain uh, concept design. Uh, this is one of the uh, first investigation projects within the Land Drainage Recovery Program to uh, work its way through uh, the initial investigations. Um, it's uh, referred here from the Infrastructure, Transport and Environment Committee. The Recommendation is for option one, remediation, uh, that includes a, a proposed pump station and rising main, uh, remediation of existing stormwater basin, modifications to night's drain, and as a second stage, detention storage within Wainoni Park. The proposal uh, is intended to uh, largely return flood risk to pre-quake levels. Uh, it does that with above floor flooding, um, not, doesn't get it quite back with uh, foundation flooding, but uh, is a quite significant improvement uh, on what we have post-quake. The whole area is low-lying and has dropped post-quake and is uh, more susceptible to flood risk. Uh, the proposal for option one is uh, believed to be in the order of $11 million and the, the, we're seeking approval to progress to detailed design. Okay, thank you. Are there, just before we have any debate, is there any questions? Yeah. Glenn first, then Phil, yeah. and Yanni. Thank you, thank you for this. I'm not a member of the EDI committee and I wasn't uh, privy to the discussion there. So d just with regard to the works aside from the uh, stormwater basin, do you envisage much by way of community inconvenience? I ask this um, against the background of a lot of intensive roadworks in that area lately which have been going on for some time and will be still so, uh, yeah, so by in, way of inconvenience. Can so in, in night strain uh, the uh, some of the, the problem we have is that the existing pump station is in red zone land yeah. uh, so the relocation of the, the pump station that is, is required because the, the area is actually sits below uh, normal high water level the stop banks protect so we need a pump station to, to pump the water through. That's pulled back uh, outside of the red zone, but, but within the road corridor area, and the, uh, the, the new uh, pipe through the red zone obviously isn't affecting residents directly. Um, the works around Wainoni Park, obviously we will uh, consult with widely, it's, it's a yeah. reserve and, and we need to do that. So that's the main, if I may ask, the main kind of, in terms of community and convenience, it's mainly the stormwater retention basin in Wainoni Park I, I you anticipate. Said, yeah, you uh, it's still some um, proposed works on Night's Drain itself. Many yeah. of those have already been undertaken post What's in private way, properties? Uh, which are, is in private property behind yeah. those properties on Pages Road. So okay. there'll be some local inconvenience likely for some of those residents. Okay. Um, we need to do some more work around the, um, yep. the scale and magnitude of that. Okay. Okay. Thank Thanks. you. Phil? So mine, um, I think Glenn has asked a very good question ar around the, the Wainoni part, part. So m my understanding from the report and when we discussion is that that, that part, w uh, which will be used as a detention bait basin when there's flooding, in fact, that's sort of like a second stage where the other, other work would be done first. Is that? Is yes, kind of like uh, the, so, the, um, uh, so the idea is that we would, uh, with, with your agreement to, to progress, uh, we will fast track uh, the stage one proposals uh, and we will follow a more conventional process and, and with consultation for Wainoni Park. Um, the, there's requirements being a reserve to, to do that and so that we're not able to fast track those elements of it so there will be separate work. Thanks, Keith. Can for we just both. Sorry, um, it's not the whole of Wainoni Park, is it? It's, it'll be a part of it? Yes. Yeah. So it's not the whole yeah. part. We don't want people going, ah. Yeah, it's certainly not from the existing sports field areas. It's uh, in the northern component of the park. 
which is currently um, sort of open space picnic area. Right. Okay, Yanni. Thank you, um, and thank you for the work you've done on this. Um, a question that people have raised with me, which um, I just think it's important that we get clarified, is because this is earthquake related and because EQC are responsible for fixing land damage, why are we paying for it when EQC are cash settling individual homes and what contribution are we getting from central government towards this program, given that we're effectively picking up the cost of what should be EQC, and given that this is earthquake related? Two things. We did approach EQC and about trying to lump that uh, money together that could help us uh, do that, and uh, those agreements uh, didn't come. There was no way that Council could force uh, EQC one way or the other. They wanted to resolve their uh, liabilities, and they resolved in a different way. Secondly, there is um, subsidy towards this from the cost share agreement uh, on part, part, parts of it. So um, we have got an agreement around uh, damaged infrastructure and uh, we are, if you have a look at the independent assessment, uh, asking the government for another discussion around the whole of the land drainage programme. Those discussions have, uh, we've, we've had a couple of prelim discussions, um, but that's purely been at an officer level to date. Okay. Sorry, just so I'm clear. So individual property owners get compensated by EQC for the increased flooding risk, um, and they take that money and they can do what, what they like with it. There's no requirement on them to fix the land. We come along and spend the money to fix the land. That comes from rates. We're hoping that we'll get some contribution through the cost share, but it says here, cost share contribution is not expected to significantly offset the total cost to council for the project. So I assume we're not getting any you know, we're not getting much from that process. So, is there anything formally we should be doing as part of approving these reports today to formally again request government to actually contribute financially? All, all I would say is the Mayor is actually having discussions with the Minister regarding the uh, negotiations and as you're aware, the independent assessor said that those conversations uh, needed to happen around the land drainage problem. Um, the issue that you've got is if you look at the wording of the Act, it talks about assets damaged, council's assets damaged. It doesn't actually talk about issues relating to the land that makes the council assets different. So it's actually not a black and white issue. But all I can say is that uh, we are pursuing that in, uh, in, in every avenue that we possibly can at this stage. Thank you. Can I just um, jump yep. to clarify that too? So. I take this as actually um, council is putting in systems and physical works to actually um, take the water away. We're not actually remediating people's private property, are we? No. no. So that's the difference, Yoni. This is actually removing the water so they don't flood rather than um, EQC money might be given to a private property to actually lift their house up or raise their land or something. But we're not doing that. This is a different... This is a public land. That's correct? Yes. Yeah. Not Thanks, Brian. Just a clarification then. Um, EQC funds are funded out of a targeted rate on people's policies. Is that correct? EQC is a levy that is on people's mm -hmm. insurance, insurance policies. Correct. Yes. So uh, the EQC um, payouts are for loss of land value. Is that correct? Well, I'm sorry, I, 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 it I, I don't want to get into it. It doesn't really matter. Well, well, it does. Well, it's, it's Dave's not the expert on EQC, so he should answer those. Well, that, well, it is. It's actually a, a, a payment for loss of value. Yeah, I think the, the, the point that Pauline's made is... Yep. Right. OK, I'm going to put it unless there's any further discussion. Yep, Phil? I just want to speak to it, because I think this is a large project, and, and others may wish to, too. But I, I want to thank the staff for you know, all the full investigative work you have done and, and clearly, um, Night Bells Creek and Night Strain stand out as priority projects, and, and the work is urgent. And I have to say, when I heard, the, heard and saw the heavy rain last night, um, I was pleased that, in fact, I expect that we will pass this today. And, and, like, and this is more than, for example, Skirt would be doing. The option of just a straight repair, which would have been like like for like, 
the committee did not recommend. The committee recommended the, the, the full remediation option because that is the most cost effective for both, both projects. And so like these projects, for the, for the people who live in this area, they will have less anxiety because the, this will return the, the, um, the flood sort of levels, if you like, to pre at least what was existing before the earthquakes. So in that way, this not only improves our environment, but it improves um, people's well-being, and so that this community is restored. So I'm really pleased that we have the chance now to sign off this report. On a, in effect, it's like a fast-track basis from now. So thank you. Right, I've got Phil, Glenn, Pauline, Dave. Okay. Thank you, yes, thank you for this uh, piece of work. Just from the perspective of the board liaison on the uh, actors, uh, the trust there, uh, immediately adjacent to Wainoni Park, and which has um, ongoing uh, significant contact with the community, can I suggest we either note uh, or recommend that we engage both actors and the community board early in the piece by way of messaging and the process around the messaging. The, the area has been subject to intensive roadworks for some time and still will be. Uh, and I think it would be prudent to actually get them on board uh, right now. Uh, the community will be grateful. The land has dropped significantly. and um, But I, I do suggest you, you take the community with you. So it's already happening? Yes, so we, we, we have uh, staff here, um, Sarah is our, our communication yep. lead, and uh, working very hard to ensure that all those groups are identified and that we have a good communication strategy to, uh, to advise and inform okay. and to gather Have feedback. you gone to ACTUS yet? Mm -hmm. You have. Okay. You there you go. They are ahead of you, Glenn. It hasn't come up. <laughs> Pauline. Come up. And, yeah, and I, and I do um, hear what Glenn is saying and, and must reiterate again. Um, the level of importance that the working group is, is putting on the, the communications and, and the, the really good job that Sarah is doing there with that and uh, identifying the people to communicate with and doing that. And so, I mean, this is, I have to reiterate also the massive size of this project. The Land Recovery, Drainage Recovery Program covers the entire city of Christchurch. Um, there are 79 kilometres of rivers, 160 kilometres of tributaries, uh, lined and unlined drains 130 kilometres and stormwater pipe network 790 kilometres. So you can see when you, when you think about that what a massive task it is and why the investigative stage is taking so long and that it is an integrated program, it's not just a piecemeal thing. So it's really exciting to see these physical works starting to come online. So this, we've had the Dudley one, which was a completely different piece of work. There were lots of options there of how to do it, but the Heathcote and, the, and, and out here, there's limited um, options. We have, in here we have three options within the one type of treatment. We've, they're related to costings more, which is a, a repair, remediate or enhance, and we've, we've chosen recommended remediation. So um, it's a really, really challenging job here and it's really, really encouraging to see that houses are now going to be begin to be remediated and reduce their risk of having water coming inside. I mean, the, the social impact of that happening is just too, too great a risk. We have to get these things going. So I do, I do want to reinforce that the, the comms is uh, working on it, uh, con communicating with people. They'll have an opportunity to probably have a direct person to speak to if they have any issues or problems or even ideas. So it's going to be a, a collaborative process with residents and those affected will be worked with very closely. So uh, once again, you know, the staff are doing such a good job on this and, um, and Glenn and any other community board members that have any um, you know, issues with groups they think might not have been communicated with, just let us know because that's the aim of the game, to keep take people with us and get this going. So. Thank, thank you. you. Dave, did you want to speak? Uh, thank you. Look, I'd just like to commend the work that uh, staff have done on this project. Um, I actually went for a wee bike ride back down the stop bank the other day and the, the existing pump station is quite low behind the, behind the bank. And um, look, in that lower reaches of the Avon, there are a number of um, old stormwater drains that go through the used to go through the old stock banks, they had um, flaps on the end of them, they don't work and I think uh, you know a lot of the land in that area has 
dropped considerably and we will be faced with um, the prospect of having uh, pumping stations lifting lifting water uh, and pumping it into the Avon. So this is the first of, of um, a big uh, first big project in the area. There will be some others. Uh, the bottom end of Beresford Street, we've been working a long time on a pumping station there that's um, again lifting water from low-lying areas back into the Avon. And so um, there will be a few other projects of a similar nature that will need to be undertaken. So look, I, I will be supporting this motion and again just uh, express my thanks to the work that has been done to date. Great. Okay, so I'll put the motion. Those in favour please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Carried. Thank you. Um,